You can't have success in life or anything that you want without the ability to influence people, without the ability to have some degree, some persuasive powers. This could be with your children, it could be with your spouse, it could be with your colleagues or your boss. The sense that you cannot have any influence on them is extremely uh, uncomfortable for us. It makes us very neurotic. It makes us very unhappy and it's a sense of powerlessness. So the first thing you have to, we have to agree on here is you want the ability to influence people. You want the ability to persuade them, to be able to move them to some degree in your direction, to get them interested in your ideas and to be honest with yourself that this is something that you want, all right? The second thing you have to be aware of is that you're usually going at it from the wrong end. You're thinking first and foremost about yourself. This is the number one problem that afflicts humanity in the world today. We are all becoming so much more self-absorbed and so much more narcissistic. And a lot of it is understandable. We're spending so much time on our smartphones and our virtual worlds and not enough with other people and interacting with them and getting inside their spirit and their mentality. So it's everywhere. Everywhere we go, we're finding the same problems. You know, you'll, you'll find it in your own interactions. You, you have a problem, you get on the phone with somebody who's, you know, who knows where they're located and they're not listening to you. They're not trying to help you. They're, they're only interested in, in, in their job or, you know, in, in any kind of service um, field, or et cetera. Continually confronting people who are not listening, who are not observing, who are not open to your spirit, et cetera. And so you've got to reverse the whole game. Let's say you have an idea for an amazing film and all you need is six million dollars. I mean, that's a lot, but that's for Hollywood purposes, it's pretty cheap. You need six million dollars to fund, right? Okay, the first thing you're gonna do is you think, I've got to impress them with how great my idea is. I'm gonna come up with this incredible scenario, this amazing pitch, how great I am, how wonderful the idea is, how much money it will sell, and I'm gonna go at them and I'm gonna pitch it to them. And then you discover that after all your work, they're not listening to you, they're not interested. They're kind of indifferent. You scratch your head and you go, what? I spent hours, I spent days crafting this perfect pitch and it's not working. It's because you're looking through the telescope at the in the wrong side, right? You need to be focusing first and foremost on them. So let's say there's a target that you have, like a film producer who you think would be perfect for them. Instead of thinking about you and your project, your first bit of research is who they are what kind of films they've made, what they, what their last film did and how it succeeded or failed. You know, what will please them? What's in their mindset? What is their interest? What are they looking for? And once you start that game, then you're gonna change everything. You're gonna alter your pitch so that it's the same ideas, but it's appealing to them and their interest in what they need, not what you need. And they'll feel it, they'll sense it, and it'll have a much greater effect on them. This applies to everything you do in life, right? If you're writing a book, I know it's like not many people are writing books, but it's the thing I know the best, is the first thought is the reader, the audience. It's not about me and my poetry and my great language and my words and my wonderful ideas. I always think first of the reader. What is their mentality? What are their problems? How are they going to read this? And the problem that a lot of writers make, and this applies to everything, it goes, applies to business, etc., is they assume that the other person has the same level of knowledge and the same interests as they do. And it's never the case. You have to think inside of the reader, you have to think, how are they going to absorb this information? Do they, or do I have to simplify my language? Do I have to make it clear, etc.? Or if you have a business, do you have to think, continually and in the most radical fashion about your clients, your customers, your audience, what their needs are. And their needs are never static. It's never like in September, they're buying this kind of clothes. And then the following year, six months later, they're going to keep buying them. No, the tastes change, particularly in the world today. The trends are continually changing. You have to keep up with that. You have to be outer oriented. Just make that one shift in your life and everything, will, all the magic will happen. Stop turning inside and thinking about yourself and about what you want to say and about what your brilliant ideas, 
how people aren't listening to you and whining and complaining and turn it around and look at them and look at what they need and what they want and what their problems are and what they're going through. Not only will it make you a better persuader and influencer, it'll make you a lot happier because it'll help you get outside of yourself and outside of all of your self-absorption. So just that one trick of turning your lens around instead of inward and focusing outward is the, is the golden key to any kind of influence in, in this world.